Welcome to Gospel Nomad. Now, in this video, we'll be looking into red flags, right? And a prime example is the story of Samson and Delilah. Now, if you want to go ahead and look at the, as, uh, the text and follow along or talk about them, it's Judges chapter 16, verse 4 through 22. Now, what are red flags? In today's society, it could be ghosting. It could be someone who's keeping you private on social media. It could be their attitude, the way they treat people, uh, you know, how they treat you uh, in the relationship, uh, if they cheat, or a ton of red flags. The question is, what are we willing to overlook as a red flag? And by doing so, those red flags kind of destroy our relationship, our self-esteem, even our relationship with God, right? So as we go through the story of Samson, uh, and again, if you haven't read about Samson, go back and read this chapter and the chapters prior to, so you get a full understanding of the mindset of Samson and what all was going on because this is pretty much a brief summary. Now with Samson and Delilah, Samson tried to get married prior, but just didn't work out. And so he'd been alone. He'd been seeing the girls of the night and stuff like that. Well, Delilah caught his attention and he fell in love. <laughs> All right. And unfortunately, sometimes us guys, when we fall in love, we really fall. So we get blinded by all the red flags. And that was this case for Samson. So the local Philistines, the uh, generals or whatnot, called uh, Delilah over and said, hey, we'll give you some money if you can get your new guy to tell us what his secret is, what his weapon is. And so several times what happened? He fell for her and he, she said, hey, you know, we've been, <clears throat> we've been together a little while. You're strong and all that. Where, where, you know, where do you get your strength? Now, I'm not going exactly off the text. So like I said, read the Bible. And don't just don't listen to me, but read directly from the Bible. I'm just trying to help everyone picture the thoughts, right? Picture what's going on. Now, remember, guys are visual. And so I'm sure she looked very beautiful. And so he said, well, do this. And... I'll be just like any other guy. Well, she put him to sleep and she did as he said. And after a little bit, making sure she he's still kind of groggy, kind of sleepy, got the sleepiness in his eyes. She says, she called the Philistines, Samson! The Philistines are on you, to, trying to capture you. So he got up, and because he's strong, he just broke out from this and went on his way. Like it was nothing. Well, she wasn't happy with that. She was, how could you lie to me? Right? And you wonder why, as guys that are in love have trust issues, right? Well, this happened again. Baby, you, you were lying to me. Why, why did you lie to me? I thought we have something, you know? So, again, go back and read the chapter. 
thought we had some. So, tell me, if you really love me, tell me, what holds your string? I don't know about you, but I'd be a little uh, shy, uh, a little gun shy, as they say, if, if this uh, happened to me the first time, right? And so, he told her another story. Well, what happens? She lulls him to sleep again, and she does exactly what he said. And then, calls over the Philistines, Samson, the Philistines are on you. They're the ones who did it, I mean, don't worry. What happens? He breaks through again and goes on his way. Well, this happens again. You know, as they call it here in the Philippines, tampo or sulking. You don't trust me. You don't believe me. I love you. Right? And what happens? He... Uh, if you really love me, you would tell me. So what do you think he did? He told her. Another lie though. And what happens? She puts him to sleep, probably after some big, uh, vigorous activity. And then she does what he says and he she calls in the philistines and then she says samson samson the philistines are after you he wakes up groggy a little bit and breaks free and goes well this continues over and over again and until he finally breaks down after nagging and nagging and nagging where he finally says I was born as a Nazarite if you cut my hair I'll have no more strength so she he puts him to sleep and what happens? She has a nice sharp razor and cuts his hair. At this point, she does like the other night. Samson, the, the Philistines are on you. So he and probably ties him up, right? But this time when he wakes up, he can't break free. He can't break free from the ropes. And the Philistines take him, they blind him, and they put him at, to work in the grinding mill. You know, I, I also have another channel, American Perspective, on my other channel. Uh, so it's not, I don't really bring out too much religious things there. It's more more for couples for different cultures trying to understand each other's culture and stuff like that but women wonder why men who fall in love have trust issues and it's because we when we fall in love oftentimes we get lied to we get led around we you know all of this thing, these things happen. But this is why I tell all the guys, as they start to date, look for the red flags. Look and make sure their heart's not going to be broken. But especially on, on this channel, I would also add trust in God. Because he has someone there for you. And, you know, especially for a praying couple, 
if you start a relationship and she's not praying for you, that, that probably is an issue. And we really have to pray for each other. We have to look out for the red flags. We have to allow God to change us because we can't change each other, right? We have to allow, both allow God to change us. We have to allow God to put his love in us. Because if we don't allow God to put his love in us, then what happens? All this other, these other things happen. And we might get blindsided by the red flags. Because Satan is a roaring lion. And he does not want us to be focused on God. He does not want us to lead each other to God. And if we learn together to learn how to pray for each other and ask God to send his love so powerfully into us to show each other love. If both people are showing each other love, then how much harder is it to fight? How much harder is it to nag on each other? So look for the red flags. Not just the guys, the women too. Look for the red flags. Ask God to lead you. Ask God to show you the good, the bad, and the ugly. Because once you guys join in marriage, you will... <laughs> be joined in marriage and whoever you pick can be either the best thing in your life or the very worst thing in your life it's no fun to be in a marriage and still feel lonely that's a whole different pain so in all of these things think about it and read the examples we have in the bible to prevent your own heartache and remember God is there pray for your spouse daily your spouse even if you don't know them pray for them daily they need your prayers ask God how to show your future spouse or your current spouse or boyfriend or girlfriend ask him how to show them your or his love daily he will trust me and God loves you and God loves them more than uh, you love them. Remember that. So think about these things as you go throughout the rest of this week. I hope you had a wonderful week and, or day. And feel free to comment and ask questions uh, about anything. And I'll try to put more long, long form videos up as well. But uh, I hope everyone has a blessed day. See you guys in the next video. And don't forget to subscribe.